combination of the structure of the company plus the advent of an online shopping universe just made survivability impossible. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 stores from your childhood that don't exist anymore. Limited to, with everything a girl could ever want for back to school. For this list, we're ranking the iconic stores you visited as a kid that aren't around anymore. Did we miss any? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Walden Books. Not every retail chain possesses a history that's as heartwarming as Walden Books. Picture it. You're struggling through a post-Great Depression America, and you notice a makeshift library subletting within a department store. That was the origin behind Walden Books, a lending venture founded by Lawrence Hoyt and Melvin Kafka. It was a means to help lift the spirits of those affected by the Depression. Eventually, it went on to become a retail fixture within malls all across the country. Walden Books and their expansion stores sold books, software, even Dungeons & Dragons paraphernalia. But a merger with Borders eventually led to liquidation in 2011. All the Walden Books locations were shuttered shortly thereafter. It's now at Walden Books. Call this number for the store nearest you. Number 9. Radio Shack the electronics giant known as Radio Shack still exists in a certain form, but definitely not in the way most of us remember. There's a wide selection of cellular phones for calls on the go. The corporation operates as an online presence, even partnering with Amazon to sell there with a virtual storefront. However, it's not the mall-centric storefront destination for PC components, Walkmans, or radio-controlled cars that most of us knew and loved. Now that really pleases me. The Color Computer 2, sale price for Christmas, only at Radio Shack. Believe it or not, close to 400 retail Radio Shacks do still exist, but they're technically not a part of their parent company and operate independently. Can I just borrow your phone? This Radio Shack 1G doesn't work anywhere where there's buildings. Number 8, Gadzooks. Gadzooks! We all have a myriad of options out there when it comes to clothing retailers, with all of them fighting for our brand loyalty on a daily basis. Gadzooks was a clothing store for teens and tweens that operated largely in malls. It was popular but struggled to keep its identity profitable. Generally speaking, the company did well, although a shift in 2003 to focus solely on 16 to 22-year-old girls didn't do Gadzooks any favors. They were eventually bought out by Forever 21. Shortly thereafter, Gadzooks was gone from the cultural landscape. Number 7. KB Toys <sighs> Is there anything more nostalgic than an old-school toy store? No, not that one. We'll get to the giraffe later. For now, we're focusing on another retail giant, KB Toys. These guys were the number two toy retailer for many years. It was a place of joy for thousands of kids throughout the 70s, 80s, and beyond. KBKids.com. We get toys. KB actually started out selling candy, but soon shifted focus in the late 60s to hit the toy market running. Nothing lasts forever, of course. Slumping sales eventually led to multiple bankruptcies and eventual acquisition by Toys R Us. There were plans in the late 2010s for another go at it, but as of writing, KB Toys remains a bygone memory. Number 6. The Discovery Channel Store The Discovery Channel. You know it, you love it, and you can't live without Shark Week. And now you see it, Snuffy's triumphant return. Yay! But what about visiting it in a mall? Well, this was the idea behind the Discovery Channel store, a chain of storefronts that sold educational gadgets, software, and toys that tied into the channel's content. It was a profitable business for a while, at one point operating 20-plus franchises in the United States. The Discovery Channel eventually dropped its support for the stores in 2007, shuttering all retail locations apart from those located in airport terminals. However, the online store is still operational and ready to serve your needs for knowledge. Number 5. Club Libby Lou The next door on our list was definitely a unique, outside-the-box approach to an immersive retail experience. In the early 2000s, Club Libby Lou sold varying package deals for a day of fun and royal treatment to make kids feel like a princess for a day. These packages included hair and makeup, friendship bracelets, stuffed animals, and even some arts and crafts. The store is named after a childhood imaginary friend of their founder, Mary Drolet. 
The brand eventually grew to almost 100 locations. However, the 2008 financial crisis took a toll on Club Libby Lou, with all locations being closed down by its parent company, Saks. Number 4. Sam Goody Sam Goody was a chain of record stores that also serviced video game fans and movie buffs. Part of the store's popularity was due to the staff, who were fans themselves. A knowledge of music history was actually part of the job requirement. White light, white heat. Velvet Underground. Okay, that would be on my list. Though and not on mine. Massive Attack, No Protection. The song is Radiation oh, Ruling the Nation. Kind of a new record. This became a place where many music fans chose to hang out, especially those who didn't have a local independent shop in town. Order up. Here's today's special. The new album from South Carolina's Hootie and the Blowfish. Sam Goody himself sold the company in 1978 and it changed hands multiple times before becoming a part of the FYE brand in 2008. Two Sam Goody locations do actually still exist, albeit as SG slash FYE hybrids in Ohio and Oregon-based malls. Grab your holiday cash, go to Sam Goody, buy some cool CDs. Forget the peas, remember the music, Goody's got it. Number three, Limited Two. Call it Two Inc, Limited Two Inc, or just Limited Two. At one point, this youth clothing retailer was everywhere. The brand started out as an extension of the women's clothing store called The Limited. Limited 2 decided to focus exclusively on girls aged 5 to 15. Limited 2. Everything a girl could ever want for back to school. The brand did suffer its share of criticism from those who objected to the alleged vanity sizing at their locations, but this didn't stop Limited 2 from being profitable, at least for a while. But I wanted to help other girls fulfill their wishes too. That's why I'm helping Limited 2 with their Win Your Wish TV special celebrating their 16th birthday. The storefronts were all converted into justice locations, although Limited 2 does still sell online at Amazon. Number 2. Toys R Us Who wants to grow up? Not us, because we'll always be Toys R Us kids. I don't want to grow up, but I'm a Toys R Us kid. They got a million toys at Toys R Us that I can play with. In 2017, it was announced that Toys R Us would be filing for bankruptcy and closing all of its stores in the UK and USA. Although this meant that Toys R Us wouldn't be gone for good, it did mean the end of an era for many families who grew up with Jeffrey the Giraffe. Well, I got my grandson and my granddaughter the last of their Toys R Us toys. However, pop-ups bearing Jeffrey's name debuted in certain Kroger grocery stores, and 400 locations are set to pop up in Macy's in 2022. That said, the classic era of Toys R Us is still very much behind us. Before we name our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Circuit City, now a home for your local spirit Halloween. Steve and Barry's, once the home of exclusive clothing lines from SJP and Amanda Bynes. Media Play, long live physical media. The Sharper Image, Tech, tech, and more tech. Zany Brainy, for toys with a more educational bent. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Blockbuster. One solitary Blockbuster video, located in Bend, Oregon, is all that's left of this once pervasive video rental giant. In fact, the last Blockbuster was even the subject of its own documentary in 2020. You put them um, clean, nice, and, and wipe down into a Ziploc bag and then carry them out. These days, the idea of renting a movie is seen by some as a quaint and antiquated practice. But for years, Blockbuster capitalized on the home video boom of the 1980s, becoming the place where many families went for movie night. But get real, you'd rather be playing video games. You can rent them from Blockbuster. The decline of physical media, the rise of streaming and Netflix's dominance, and the home entertainment market essentially ran Blockbuster out of town. It's not been a Blockbuster year for me financially. My Blockbuster stock is down. 
only the bend location stands to remind tourists and locals of what was once an iconic part of cinephile culture. I'll be there. I'll be there. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.